It isn't every day that something big and sexy drops in the Python world. Let's take a quick look at SQL model with PyCharm. Okay, here's the tweet announcing SQL model. Kind of been hinted at for a while. So when it came out, I was like, stop everything. Oh my God, fanboy, ah, go take a look at it. And the biggest thing I've built since Fast API and Typer, big words in the thread, there was something that was particularly interesting to me, which was the developer experience in tooling such as editors. It's a big thing I've been interested in the last couple of years, bringing static analysis and the developer experience that kind of you get in TypeScript over to the world of Python. So I wanted to think, I wanted to see to myself, hmm, are I gonna work in PyCharm? As you would expect, the website and the documentation, great job. One of the biggest reasons Fast API took off so fast is great docs, not just about its stuff, but the stuff related to its stuff. One-stop shopping for answers for everything. So taking a look at this page, quickly you get told exactly what to do in some code. And the code makes a database and the code goes and gets something from the database. And I'm like, what if I just cut and pasted that and put it in PyCharm? Would I get that developer experience? Let's take a look. Oh yeah, over in PyCharm, I did it. I just cut and pasted it. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do know that if I come down here and run it, I will get a database that will go and select something based on this function that uh, initializes everything and this function which goes and plucks one thing out based on this model. So let's run it, see if it works, then come back, take a look at what's happening behind the scenes with SQL model and then see if PyCharm does the right thing. So I'm gonna run it. And it's gonna spit out a SQLite file. I'll double click on it, open the database and browse it real quick. Look at the hero table. Sure enough, I've got three heroes. So it did the right thing. It wrote a file with a correct database, yay. Uh, so back to the code, um, I'm gonna take a look at this entity, this uh, class called hero. And it's subclasses from SQL model, and it passes some keywords to the, con not the construction of the instance, but to like the class generation aspect. At first I thought it was this thingy with init subclass. I thought it was that pep. I can't find init subclass anywhere, dunder init under subclass. Uh, anywhere in the code. So I guess it's just doing this and hooking up with Pydantic's class generation above my pay grade. Let's go back to the code. What does SQL model look like? All right, it's subclasses from base model. What's base model? Ah, it's a Pydantic base class. The thing that we know we love from Fast API, and it's kind of the hint of the raison d'etre the reason for SQL model is in Fast API right now, you have to write your Pydantic thingy and you gotta write your SQL Alchemy thingy. And that's one thingy too many. And so Sebastian wants you to write one thingy, this SQL model thingy, which will behave both as a Pydantic class and a SQL Alchemy model. It's got as a meta class this thing. Ooh, can you imagine how much banging his head against the wall Sebastian's done? This is what it looks like. Um, it subclasses from some things. That's in Pydantic. I'll bet that's in SQL Alchemy. And goes and does some meta class Python thingies. It also passes into the class statement this thing called a registry. What's that? Let's go take a look. It's the kind of thing that I've been working on for two years and never released. <laughs> a way to stash things and look them up later. And uh, that looks pretty complicated. I'll bet he's been working pretty hard on this. Okay, back to my model. And this is the part where we really get into kind of the value prop. Well, I'm not going to say that. Metaclass magic with SQL Alchemy and Pydantic. That's 
pretty hard. But the part that I really got gravitated to is the thing that Pydantic really makes you look at and and appreciate is the fact that type information is using standard Python type hints. Therefore, all the tooling that understands how to do Python stuff can just use it. Previously, that information was on the right-hand side in the ORM kind of field column definition thingies. Now we've taken it from the right-hand side and moved it over to the left-hand side. Why does that matter? First, you don't have to learn extra syntax in order to be able to do that part. If you know it in Python, you know it. But folks like us in PyCharm, we would have to go and learn every little framework's system for expressing that information and parse it and turn it into our indexing, blah, blah, blah. Now, for at least that part of the information, we can just use normal Python idioms. So we know that's an optional int, that's a string, etc. Okay, that's a look behind the scenes for what it's doing. Let's take a look. Does PyCharm do the right thing? Do we get a better developer experience because of type hinting? Let's take a look. Okay, here is hero, hero, and secret name. Can I autocomplete on it? Sure, I can autocomplete on it because that's not a really big deal. This is just find the class, the symbol, and get the class attributes off of it. Blah, blah, blah. Not a big deal. This little one, though, this one's a little bit tougher. Because I've got statement up here, and that's what statement says it is, a select a scalar. And it's passed to exec, which returns something and passes it to first, which returns something and binds it to a variable named hero. The type information about response values results from here to here to here doesn't get over to hero PyCharm. Do you know what hero is? And sure enough, we know that hero is a hero. It's an optional hero because first might not find anything. And that lets us in tooling do things like secret name. I find this to be fascinating. I find this to be valuable. I find this to hopefully be the start of a trend of taking static analysis instead of it just being eat your vegetables, let's put it to use to make a better developer experience.